Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Simplemans Comics. I'm your host, Brian Wood, and this is The Bolo Show. We are coming to you live premiere. Not necessarily live. This is pre-recorded. We recorded this Wednesday night. Actually, kind of Thursday morning-ish. But either way, with me, as always, is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. What's going on, buddy? Oh, man. You know what? doesn't matter what time it is, Brian. I'm happy to be here. A little bit of delay, a little bit of technical issues, but again, that's the beauty of the live premiere versus the old school live stream, right? Where we would have been holding everybody up. So doesn't matter what time we're here. We're ready to rock and talk new comic book day releases um, from the CBSI Bolo list. Right. So it's important to say that we do have an audio version. So that way you don't see any of the video technical difficulties. But there is an audio version, Simple Man's Comics Podcast, available on iTunes stitcher and google play as well as we do have a sponsor for this show and it's from nick dorman at slabbed heroes make sure you check out slabbedheroes.com for all those modern guaranteed 9-8 needs plus he has raws and he even has a killer teenage mutant ninja turtle exclusive up there right now doesn't he jack oh yeah awesome uh tmnt 100 variant uh it's got that excellent uh shredder kind of profile image close up looks incredible Right, so real quick before we get into the Bolo show tonight, Jack kind of had a special announcement he wanted to make, right? Yeah, you know what? I want to thank um, one of our longtime viewers, Simpleman's Comics Patreon uh, family member, um, Matt, a.k.a. Deuce Hammer. Um, many of you may have seen in the chat. Many of you from our Patreon may know. You know he reached out to me on Twitter um, shortly after I made the announcement on the channel of my father's passing. Um, and he said that he was working on um, a special project with his LCS, who was doing an Indiegogo comic, um, to benefit cancer research. And he said they, they wanted to do a dedication to my father. You know, I really struggled with what to say in the dedication. I left it to the last second. Um, just kind of told him what my father meant to me. And he ended up getting it done. And uh, today I got a surprise in the mail. Um, and they showed up. And the comic is called boundless um hold it up so you can see it in the camera it's from horizon comics which is actually the name of the lcs this is their own publishing company like i said they did it on indiegogo um and i'm gonna make sure we've got the link in the description for you guys if you guys want to go and grab a copy um again all the money goes to to fund uh cancer research so many of us have been affected by that he's also got some exclusive variants in here that's the brick and mortar variant that was it's an awesome wraparound cover that was available at their actual location. They're in uh, Lancaster, California. Um, and then this is the awesome Indiegogo exclusive variant. Real cool. Dig the art. Um, haven't gotten a chance to read the books yet. He also included some extra copies of Cover A for my brothers, who I mentioned in the dedication. But I got to say, man, that's why we call this Simpleman's Comics family. I, I mean that. Um, I literally opened this package with my daughter. And, you know... Just to be honest, we both kind of cried a little bit. It was a, it was kind of a touching moment um, that he would reach out to me to do that. And, you know, processing the loss of a loved one is a, it's a weird thing. You know, you kind of move on, but it's always there with you. Um, I know that that's something, Brian, you've talked about. Like, it just – it doesn't take much to kind of bring that up and make you feel that. So um, it was a touching moment, and uh, these are now some of – my favorite comics in my personal collection. These are the type of comics that will never leave my collection. Um, so definitely want to say thank you to Matt. Definitely want to say check out the Indiegogo. Give it, a, give it a look. You can't support a better cause. And shout out to Horizon Comics um, You know, for an LCS to go out of their way to do something like this uh, for a cause that affects just, I mean, so, so many of us um, is absolutely touching. So. You know, thank you very much, and uh, it's something that I will cherish for, forever, and, I, and I'm grateful and appreciative of it. Yeah, so make sure you check out the description of this video on YouTube, and we'll put a link to that Indiegogo so you can support that comic as well. And we are going to bring up this week's Bolo List. Now, if this is your first time watching this show or you're wondering what is the Bolo List, it is the Be On The Lookout List. Jack creates this list. On it, we have first appearances, reader buzz, Variant buzz, and then Jack Alfer's a long-term play at the end of it. 
but we're not going to hold you up. We're just going to get right into it right now, starting with first appearances. First one on the bolo list this week is Strike Force number one. All right, Strike Force number one now had an obvious first appearance, right? We all knew that the team of Strike Force being a first appearance um, was going to come into play with this issue. Um, and sure enough, it did. Uh, but there was a kind of a surprise first appearance. It looks like we've got our, say, big bad, our big villain in, in the issue uh, first appearing. Um, definitely a kind of like ominous introduction. Um, and furthermore, we had a big death in the issue as well. And if you have never watched, never tuned in to watch the Bolo Show, we're going to talk about everything that encompasses this book right now. So we're not just going to talk about the first appearance, which is, that's uh, Count Ophidian, I believe you would pronounce it, um, is the big bad guy. Um, but we're also going to talk about everything that happens in the issue. So there was a major death in the issue. Um, when we talked about this this issue, and this is Brian, this may be the first release we've had that's kind of full circle, because we talked about this one on um, the pre-FOC show. I believe our first pre-FOC show. Yep. So this is our f first bolo list that encompasses books that we talked about pre-FOC. Um, and, you know, we talked about this issue, and I don't like team appearances, I don't like team firsts, but you know what, we, we get a big bad. And then we talked about the team and how we were kind of interested in the team. Everybody's got that Hellstorm logo on them. Damien Hellstorm dies in the issue. Um, could it be, you know, a fake death to come back? We're dealing with occult stuff, so of course. But, you know, there was actually a page at the end of the book where they listed him as deceased. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see. But it, it looks like he died. And I, I think that's going to be like the tone of this story. This is a very dark um, you know, blade-driven horror story. Um, we may see more deaths as this series progresses, but um, yeah, I want to say shout out to Carter Lee, another Simpleman's Comics uh, Patreon member who hooked me up with a lot of info on uh, the day before New Comic Book Day, so I could check out a lot of these releases that I have not yet gotten the opportunity to read. But he was pretty hyped about this one. He liked this one, so. Um, I may give you a couple other Carly takes as we go through this show tonight, but um, yeah, this, so this is one I think I'm looking forward to reading. Um, let us know in the chat if you enjoyed it, um, and uh, let us know if you're excited for issue number two, because I think the way it ended is going to really set up a second issue. Um, the variants are not necessarily performing at or above ratio, which I think I kind of expected, um, but it's something to keep an eye out for long term. Brian, I don't know if you noticed this, man, but it seems like more and more ratio variants are not getting above ratio. Um, do you think that maybe those are tougher spec plays in the short term right now, or is it just we haven't had a release in a while that's had those kind of covers? I think it's the opposite. I think that there's been so many great books that popped off over the past couple of months. We were talking about this in Discord tonight where people said there's been some crappy books lately. I said, well, I think actually... People were just lucky, and then I had that abundance of great books that popped off. I think actually it's just getting back to normal right now. So you're used to seeing a lot of books maybe not go at ratio, or people are just suffering from fatigue because they're all chasing all those books that came out earlier. I'm also wondering is, is this book good enough to where you want to go back? Because then they have a War of the Realms tie-in issue for Strike Force. Um, I'm think, not sure about that. I think they may, they may have, though. Yeah, I think they I think they did, and if it is, if, if it's worth going back to maybe picking one of those up, um, I haven't even, it's been one of those days where I haven't even gone and picked them up books yet for today, but, uh, this is on the pull list. I just got cover a, I don't, I kind of like the wraparound, even though I haven't been a fan of the immortal wraparound variants, but I do like the whole winter soldier U S flag. So if they have one of those for cheap, I'll probably pick it up. Yeah. There is a war of the realm strike force, um, a tie in it, although it is a different team. Gotcha. So, um, but yeah. I think if you really enjoyed this read, you may want to check that out because it could be kind of like the prequel that leads to where we're at here. Um, and who knows? There may be like Easter eggs in that or a little appearance in that, maybe cameo. I don't know. I'm, I'm speaking off, you know, off top of the head, but that's a good point, Brian. I hadn't even thought about that. But we're going to move into the next book on the first appearance list, and we're, called, we're talking Red Hood Outlaws number 38. And this is what? First appearance of Monster Arm? Yeah, and this is one, um, not to be negative, but, you know, we get a lot of, uh, I say crap, 
on this show, said there's a perception that this is my list of all the books you should buy. It is not my list of all the books you should buy. Again, this is this is a list of all the books that are being talked about that I can physically fit in the graphic. Um, and Red Hood Outlaws 37 was hot. It had multiple first appearances in it, right? But here we are at issue number 38, and that book's already died off. So there's another first appearance in this one. I'm not speaking negatively about it, saying that it's not going to be something, but let's be honest, it's a crapshoot. I mean, it's it's... You know, first appearances come up all the time. We've talked about this on the channel a lot, Brian. DC Spec really isn't performing right now. So this is really a buy for 3 or $4, stick in a box, and hope that it becomes something. I'm not advocating it anything really more than that if you want to buy it. And that's really, again, that's a if you, you know, buy what you like. That's a if that makes sense to you. There's other places on this list I would put my money personally. But, I'm you know, I'm not hating on anybody who does. Now, I haven't read the issue. So if you read the issue and you're in the chat right now or you're watching the video on replay um, or, you know, you're listening to it in your car and not while you're driving, you know, shoot us a comment. Let us know. Um, what do you think? What do you think of the character? Is there any long-term legs in the character? But, you know, Brian, you talk about variant fatigue. I have first appearance fatigue. It gets to a point where it's just the first appearance is just, you know, I'd rather miss one like Star, who I wasn't all over in issue eight, or Rain. Um I used to get worried about those things, like Weapon H. I remember I missed out on, um, and I used to be, oh man, I blew it. Um, but then, for every time, then you can overreact to that and chase ten of them, and you know, spend what profits you would have made on those characters tenfold over um, on dud books. So, you know, you got to be careful. Um, so, and this one, I'm not real high on, but again. That comes from a position of not really knowing much about it. I just know that the last issue, everybody was hot to trot on, and it hasn't proven to be anything more than a one-week wonder. Right. I also think that some of those books, we mentioned how DC spec-wise isn't doing that well, but there's still a lot of great stories going on in DC right now. Um, I'm enjoying Justice League. I've enjoyed Flash. I've enjoyed Deathstroke. Um, Detective more so than Batman, but... Who knows? Maybe these are those books that you're enjoying for the stories. You put them away, and the next thing you know, they're doing like some DC story down the road, like Marvel's doing right now. That's popping off some of these back issues. That these books may may turn out to be something more down the road. Who knows? Right. That's just what the way comics work. But either ways, maybe not spec picks, but there are some great stories in there, so they are well worth still picking up. Yeah, th- I totally agree with that. I think DC's got some great reads. And the next on the first appearance list is one we've talked about before, but this is Captain Marvel number eight. This is the third print. Yeah, and we can blow through this one quickly because the reality is it's the same cover as the second print, which I think is an amazing cover, just a different color. I like Um, the red better, actually. (laughs) I do, too, and I honestly think the second print and the third print go well together since it's kind of like the two colors that Star kind of uses. So I get why they kind of did that. But at the same point, like, you know, it's just a color change. Now, the second print I know was heavily uh, ordered by stores who missed out on the first print. I'm sure this third print will be much lower printed. We had a post in our Facebook group recently where a guy showed like a handful of like four or five of the second print and was like, these are everywhere. Four or five at your store doesn't mean they're everywhere because um, there's plenty of stores where stores don't even order second prints. They're not out there like that. Um, again, we got to stop looking at comics like this. And not seeing what's going on in the big picture. Um, but, you know, I don't think that a simple color change is going to drive the market on this. So, cool collectible if you're, you're, you know, you're trying to go long on Star. Other than that, I would say probably not one you want to focus on. Right. And then the last one for first appearances this week was Batman Superman number two. Okay, so this is one that I think some people are going to feel like has legs because we're getting another Who Laughs character. Um, Here's the problem. I feel like we're getting too many. So I think that that kind of devalues the whole thing. Like Batman Who Laughs shook the earth when he appeared. Um, And he's a character that stuck around. There was some buzz, right, for the Shazam Who Laughs. I got a couple comments saying that I got this one wrong. I did not get this one wrong. Again, shout out to my man Carter Lee giving me those uh, screenshots early. But um, some people are going to say this is the first full appearance of Shazam Who Laughs, right? But Brian, 
You know how I feel about that, my man. So uh, we already had Shazam Who Laughs first appearance in issue one. I'm not going to list the same first appearance twice. It's a first appearance, so it can only be one first. Um, we've all only had one first. So it's one of those things where, um, you know, I'm not going to list that book twice and confuse people. I, that's for the market, I guess, to decide which one's the first, whether it's issue one or issue two. I, I love the cover as far as, like, I could kind of see people gravitating Shazam who laughs for number two because of the cover, cover A. But the real event in this story is the fact that uh, Superman gets kind of jokerized. And uh, Batman who laughed has that kind of classic line saying the world's finest are, like, back again or something like that. Um, it's kind of cool. But the next issue is called Superman Undercover, so it almost makes me wonder, is Superman faking? Um, so be cautious putting your money. I haven't read you. I just looked at some pages. I'll give you that right out right out um, on the offset. But it may, that the fact that the next issue is called Superman Undercover makes me wonder if this isn't going to be something that sticks. So don't go sinking your money into these new Who Laughs characters thinking that long-term – you're going to get Batman Who Last Returns. I don't think you are. I've been wrong plenty of times. So, you know, I'm not Nostradamus on the mic here. Um, <laughs> all I thought about was the rapper Nas when I said that. But anyways, um, you know, at the same point, uh, you know, like I say, you, I imagine you're watching this show um, because you're looking for our spec opinion. And my opinion would be now we've gotten two Who Last characters and two issues um, I think that might be a bit overkill. And if he's undercover, it's just like Superman that grins or, I don't know, shows mm. his teeth. But And it should have a cameo with Fletch undercover. <laughs> Back to the 80s, baby. Always 80s. But that wraps up first appearances for this week. And we're going to roll right on into the Reader Buzz. Kicking off Reader Buzz, we're going to go with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 98. Yeah, um, this was a highly anticipated issue. Um, my man Nick from Slabbed Heroes secured that cover A, original cover art. Um, incredible. He was, uh, he was very stressed and excited to grab that. Um, I think that that could be a serious piece right there. You get the Mutanimals standing side by side with Raphael. Um, cover B, you see the classic battle between the brothers, Raphael and um, Leonardo, kind of uh, squaring off and uh, being separated by Donnie. And I think that, you know, if you know anything about TMNT lore, that, that's kind of a classic showdown. Well, that gives you a good, good idea of what's going on in this issue. Um, Raphael leaves the team. Um, Baxter Stockman does become elected mayor. And the big reveal at the end of the issue is that they release a kind of a mutant bomb that turns people into mutants. And we talked about that on the Hot and Cold show last night. Um, where that's going to lead us, we don't know. We also speculated, Brian, that that could be how Jenica turns back into a human, right? That the antidote for that? Right. Well, you know what? A little update today that we got is Jenica's on the cover of issue 101. So I would bet against that happening in issue 100 like we were – saying speculators may think again the art is always subject to change but that's kind of my feeling right now is that i think you're a little safer with the jenica spec than it seemed like 24 hours ago so we'll see how that one turns out but this is going to be a heavily ordered issue again not necessarily a key issue um 95 and 97 were more the keys um this one is more of a, again, a, a road to 100 issue. Yes, there was the big event of the, the you know, the, the mutant bomb or whatever they're going to end up calling it. But, you know, it, this is more on that road to 100. Either way, great read. If you're a Turtle fan, you'll love it. If you're not a Turtle fan, I think uh, getting on this road to 100, you'll enjoy it. And, uh, you know, there's, a, there's some cool exclusive variant covers out there, Brian, but... I don't think there's any cooler than Kevin, my man Kevin's cover for uh, Frankie's Comics, uh, that Gabrielle Delato, just uber-realistic turtle cover. 
right? They do have that available right now at frankiescomics.com. Full disclosure, Frankie's is a sponsor of this channel, but we want to make you aware. I ordered one of these myself. I ordered the trade dress. They do have it available. Virgin, trade dress, and I can't remember that they were offering graded copies of this or not. They usually do. Um, but again, now you mentioned that he's a sponsor. Let me tell you what that means, guys. That means when you join the Simplements Comics Patreon group and you buy those uh, those Eisner level Bolo boxes, you are getting Frankie's Comics exclusive variants in those boxes now. Um, starting this month, we are going to start lacing those boxes with some of the best. And let me tell you something. Kevin Fields and his team have been very generous. Sent us a lot of those virgin copies, a lot of those high-end, sold-out type books. Um, there's going to be some. There's going to be some heaters going out in those boxes, and it's only going to get better because these guys are working their tails off producing hot variants on what seems like a every other day basis. Um, so we're excited to work with them. Um, this, this this is not the only release that came out this week that Frankie's had a variant for. So just incredible. Right, and although they do send us some for the bolo boxes, I fully admit. The books that I like, I still go on and support him, and I order copies for myself as well. Well, and that's another benefit because if you do and you're a Patreon member, there's an exclusive code for Patreon members who want to make those purchases. Maybe you want a graded copy. Maybe you want a book you didn't get in your Bolo box. Maybe you want that, um, you know, that virgin. Or Frankie's always sells those incentives for the books that come with incentive variants as well. And he does them below ratio. Right. And just so you know, the 98 wasn't didn't have graded up there now. He has trade dress, virgin, and he also has copies of the 1 in 10 incentive if you're looking for that. So we're going to go right on into the next book on the Reader Buzz, and that was Transformers Galaxies number 1. This is another book we kind of talked about on pre-FOC, right? Right, yeah. There's, um, there was a lot of buzz in the Transformer community. Now, again, not all that buzz was positive. Um, I heard from some big Transformers people who were really kind of negative on this book, saying that it was a um, lesser important sect of the Transformers. But they are doing something with Transformers and IDW right now, Brian. They're, this whole bold new era, they're really trying to shift um, the story, kind of give new backstory. I think it's going to play out in movies. Um so, yeah, these aren't performing the way you would hope from a miniseries. We talked about this. I'm going on record saying, you know, these out-of-the-regular continuity miniseries is usually for Marvel or DC don't do well. For IDW, they tend to do really well because they're lower printed, especially when you get these high-ratio variants. But we're, we're not seeing them hit those high ratios. Part of it is there was a lot of other releases this week that I think people put their money into. Um, part of it is, again, I just don't think this release penetrated the market the same way. Um, but but this storyline could easily be the basis of a movie and have long-term play because we know that Hasbro wants to really develop this universe. And now we know that not – at least – I shouldn't say now we know because it's the same speculation sites are reporting this. They report everything else. So we won't say now we know. But we'll say now we believe what you and I have already spe- – you and I have already speculated on this, Brian, on this channel, that Power Rangers could be entering the Hasbro universe that connects with G.I. Joe and Transformers, Mask, um, and all of that. So I'm excited. You guys know that's my stuff, man. So I'm excited for that. Um, that would be incredible. Right. And then the next one was SF, SX, or – Safe sex, number one, right? Yeah, yeah. I like how uh, you blush just saying that. I right? know. Safe whoopee. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a, what, an Image Comics release. Um, it, this is one of those books. It's kind of had that sex criminals buzz. But I don't know if it's had that sex criminals buzz just because of the topic or because of the um, – it, it's of that quality. I haven't checked it out yet. Um, you know, I don't even know if I'm planning on reading this one. You guys are going to have to convince me in the chat that this is a read. Like I say, I'm a good Christian boy. This is, I don't usually go for these kind of books. But it seems like these kind of books are making a, a, a big play right now in the market, Brian, because we've also got Money Shot from Vault coming out, which is a kind of similarly sexual-driven storyline. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, Mad the, Cave's this, got one similar too, right? Was it RV9 or... 
Yeah, yeah. So there, you know, somebody's figuring out that these books are in demand. You know what I think might have done it, Brian? Faithless. Yes, that's what I was gonna <laughs> say, my dude. Which but when I you mean, had this one up there, I was like, I kind of liked that uh, the Jay Lee variant this week for Faithless yeah. was at number six. Yeah. That white cover with Jay Lee's art. It's, I think it's one of those ones people like them or hate them, and I tend to like them, but. Um, Image also had another, they had six criminals, but didn't they also have a comic called Sex a while back, yes. like 2012, yeah. 13? And then I also want to say, while you got me on the topic of Jay Lee, before we go further, a book not on the list is that Angel Number 5. Yeah. Andy Tomberlin from the Indie Spotlight series mentioned this, that that Angel Number 5, 1 in 40 variant is an absolute ghost from Jay Lee. Great cover art. Also, full disclosure, guys, we had heard from Boom Studios that that book was not heavily ordered. I think we can say that now. Yeah. Don't get mad at me, guys, if we weren't supposed to. But, you know, it's this. it's been released. Um, yeah, that book wasn't heavily ordered. Again, you got to order 40 copies to get that book. How many stores out there do you think are ordering 40 copies of Angel? Only like you're really your biggest of the big. So that's one to keep an eye out for on the very end front, especially if you're a J. Lee completionist. Don't let that one sit because I think it could go up in value. Yeah, whether you like Angel or not, that cover is just freaking gorgeous. Right, right. So especially, like I said, if you're collecting Jay Lee, that may not be one you want to sleep on. Yep. Next on the Reader Buzz, we have Powers of X, number five. Every week, it's one of them, right? <laughs> right. But and you and, I, you and that, I joked about this last night after the uh, hot cold show. We were like, well, what are we going to do? We're going to say the same thing. We're going to go yeah. one in ten variant. Flower variant, connecting yep. variant. That's how you make your money, right? Every week. Yeah, connected variants. Sell them as a set. I mean, we sit up here and kind of make light of it, but it speaks volumes to the amount of work that Jonathan Hickman's been doing with this story to garner this amount of buzz week in and week out between two mini series and then X Men number one getting ready to come out. And people have just reignited their excitement for X Men again. Yeah, I, I think people almost take for granted right now that we have two miniseries that literally every issue have – and actually I should say three because really House of X and Powers of X are separate miniseries or Powers of Ten, whatever you guys want me to say. But um, the fact that those two series plus Absolute Carnage have literally required every issue to be reader buzz or I'm going to get yelled at. Um, most issues hit – number one may hit reader buzz and then you're struggling to get beyond that. Um, just because people want to read an issue doesn't mean it's reader buzz. It has to be so much buzz that there's people just posting about it constantly. Like I cannot wait to get my hands on this issue. So the reader buzz section tends to be in the most demand. And then there's so many new number ones that pop up on a weekly basis. Those tend to get more of that reader buzz. So it is an absolutely uh, a testament to what Jonathan Hickman's been able to do as well as Donny Cates with absolute carnage to be able to put out these mini series and get this much attention. Um, I had a comment from uh, John from John's Comics with Kids, the YouTube channel, I Instagram, where he said he's gonna be thankful if these series are over because they're hurting his wallet. I can see a lot of people feeling that way. Um, if you're like heavy into House of X, Powers of X, and you're heavy into Absolute Carnage, um, your pull list has got to be chunky right now, especially if you're grabbing those Absolute Carnage tie-ins. Yeah, speaking of Absolute Carnage, if it weren't for that, we probably wouldn't be talking about this next book much, and that's. Amazing Spider-Man number 30. Yeah, I don't think we'd be talking about this book at all. And to be honest with you, it's kind of a dud. Yeah. Um, this was a book that had a lot of reader buzz, and people did not like it. I got nothing but negative reviews of this book. So uh, there was a lot of speculation based on the um, solicitation. So again, I'm going to talk about the last call show. So we talked about this book, right? This was one of our books that was on our radar, right? Right. We we were speculating on what that wraparound variant might be because it was, at the time, they didn't have the art for it. Right. And it ends up being Norman Osborn, more just um, a classic Ryan Otley variant. It's one of the more liked variants as far as cover art, but the reality is it's just more of a homage tribute because he just died in the previous issue. Um Nothing of serious note happens in this issue that I've been made aware of that progresses. You know, it's, it's a story progressor, but it's not um, It's not a key by any means. Now, I will say, as somebody who's very bullish on Normie Osborne and, um, you know, his Red Goblin, I like that 125 Codex. 
I know you may say, well, yeah, you know, it's it's below ratio. But again, we just talked about that earlier in the show. It seems like everything is going below ratio. And that allows you to maybe have some meat on the bone. You can pick it up for about 15 to $18 right now. And I think it's a good cover. And I think that's a character who people really – you know, people are going to talk negatively about that character because they they lost money or they didn't make the money they had hoped um, due to pre-FOC discussion, not by any one entity, but by Marvel itself. Um, but still, hundreds of thousands of people bought into that character and that storyline. Amazing Spider-Man has not been successful since that, that issue. And we're going on like three years since that issue, so... Um, or that run, that seven ninety, you know, four, five, really seven ninety two through um, eight hundred. So I think that there's a lot of people that really connect with this character. I think this character still has a lot of legs. Um, so this incentive variant, you know, a few years later, I think could be one to keep an eye out for. I like it also because if it's selling under ratio, what is you have the three covers for it? Or a lot of times you see Spider Man ratios sell under ratio is those ones those big issues like that del auto one in 25 that came out where the print romans was it <laughs> astronomically high right um so i feel Multiple better about hundreds of thousands getting a, a one under ratio for something yeah nothing much happened in this book but you just feel better about having something with only three covers not that huge print run that that those other issues had um so you never know might be something to find Especially if you find them on those sales that you always see online, get yes. it and tuck it away. You never know what might happen. That's certainly some, that's a good point, Brian. That's one I would keep an eye out for to see if it ends up on one of those discount sales and you could get it for like five, six bucks. That'd be a great grab. Yeah, yeah. Those seventy-five percent off Midtown. Just except you order it from there and you forget about it because by the time they ship it to you, you're like, oh yeah, I ordered this. Right, and it always doesn't it always feel like when you buy those, you're less excited when you get them than when you were when you ordered them. It's like all that FOMO passes, and then when you get in, you're like, okay, this is cool. Yeah. But especially those dollar books. I order a lot of dollar books in those, and then I get them in, and I'm like, why did I order all these Teen Titans cover B variants for a buck? Yep. Next one on the Reader Buzz, this one is probably one of the hottest books of the week, I would say, and that is the plot number one from Vault. Yeah, you know, and there's been – funny, we had some talk about Vault in the live uh, chat of the um, last call show last week. Um, you know, we had like a Larry Doherty who's, you know, from Larry's Comics, big uh, – if you're not familiar, just, you know, a major kind of name in the comics industry. He's a retailer. He sold a lot of comics in his day. I'll say that. Um, you know, he said that Vault – has a short shelf life and he's right you know vault books have tended to have a couple weeks these savage shores is the outlier for sure um but the thing about vault is their quality is exceptional their stories are incredibly well done their vault vintage variant program puts out just gorgeous cover after gorgeous cover and the reality is a lot of these stores are made for adaptation it takes companies a long time to be able to get to that point of optioning they are right there. There's a movie project upcoming that they're working on that we'll just leave it at that. And they there's also a side- have those – sorry, you're probably going to say it, but Waste of Space and a bunch of those other ones are starting to have audio books of them come out. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about that actually. The audio books, which is, I think is a unique thing. We've praised James Hake on the channel several times for his kind of unique view of the industry. I think this is one that the Wassel brothers um, – are uh, early on, I think, because they're like in regular fiction, um, audio versions are dominant. I know Brian, you're a big audiobook guy, so yeah, I know comic books are a visual art form, but there's a way to do them in an audio version that'll still, I think, can still connect with people. And either way, you know what it could introduce is those people maybe who don't read comics, maybe your friends who aren't into comics or swear they'll never like them. Um, that may be a way to get them into it. But either way, this book is a little bit of an outlier, I think, Brian. Cover B and C sold out at most big retailers. Um, they did an extra cover for this one. Um, and I really love that cover B, that first appearance of Swamp Thing. We've told the story on the channel before. BSI uh, hits us up and goes, we got to do a variant for this book. Uh, he was like, this is just got to be the first Swamp Thing, right? And Brian immediately sends the cover image of this book and was like, like this? So uh, 
the Wassel brothers were thinking the same way we were, so we weren't uh, the most unique on this one. But um, I think this is a hit. This is an absolute hit. And again, shout out to Vault and the way they work with retailers to put those Vault vintage uh, variants. I probably shouldn't even be doing this. Cause I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot, but retailers, these are this is a great company to work with. Absolute amazing company to work with. And Brian, we just got some cover art today, didn't we, buddy? We did. Some heater, so, some heater cover art. Yes. We can't say much more than that, but you know what? I know I may seem like I get excited for every variant we release. Um, this one I'm very excited about. Uh, I, this one, I'm proud of this idea. But either way, um, I also want to bring up that cover all the way on the far right. That is the New York Comic Con exclusive variant. That book was announced by comicbookinvest.com. Um, we had the honor and privilege of being reached out to by Vault Comics for all the, the work we've done, kind of shining a light on their books. And, you know, Brian and I, we get a lot of credit because we're out here and, they're, you know, out front talking. And I'll tell you what, the first person I ever heard championing Vault Comics was my man Brian Wood. But I'll tell you who gets should get a lot of credit as well is Andy Tomerlin from the Indie Spotlight Series, who's back on comicbookinvest.com. Check out that new Indie Spotlight Series article that came out this week. Um, I think this was his pick of the week. Andy is the king of independent comics right now. Um, he moves the needle. He is a must-read. And you know what? I, I, I get the opportunity sometimes to look at those like back-end site analytics. Not enough of you guys are reading his articles, man. It's as good as it gets. There's as much value in his article as there is in any other article on the site. Um, so definitely be checking out that Indie Spotlight series, especially if you're speculating on independent comics because he keeps it real and he's really in touch with those um, publishers. But back on that New York Comic Con variant, 100 print run, extremely limited. Not only is it extremely limited, it is going to be the highest quality book Vault has ever produced. We're talking about like material wise this thing is supposed to be just beyond top notch i actually uh i feel bad that i don't have like the information in front of me to talk about like what went into this book but it is incredible i remember reading the the information that they sent us for the marketing and being like wow this is big 100 dollars retail price i don't know if i've ever brian seen a cover released for 100 dollars. there's a part of me that thinks that's crazy but you know what? There's a hundred copies. This is a book that people love. How many times do we see books come out at these conventions, right? Think Spawn for one, and they become three, four hundred dollar books. So if the book becomes that, a hundred dollars isn't much. Um, also, again, this is the most beloved vault book um, that I think I've seen in a while. So this is one to keep an eye out for. Um, let us know what you think about that $100 price tag. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, we'd love to hear from you. Um, I think that book's going to sell out, Brian, for $100. So I'm going to go ahead and bet that. I'm going to go ahead and bet that that book sells out at $100. Be curious to see. I'm sure a lot of people will be upset because they just uh, removed a lot of that, that overhead margin for what yeah. people could make off of that book, especially for 100 copies. But either way... Yes, love some Vault Comics. Shout out to Rajim Seabrook from the Patreon. He's the one that actually championed Vault to me because I liked some of their books and he kept pushing me towards some more of their other books. And Adrian and Damien Wassel as well. So great group of guys and shout out to Rajim for, for all the way out there in Montana for pointing those out to us. But moving on into the reader buzz, we have Psycho List number two. Yeah, Psycho, again, we I mentioned this earlier, right? Um... Getting a number two on the on the reader buzz list is difficult. Um, Black Box Comics, uh, they seem to have a hit on their hand with Psycho List. Now, I didn't read Psycho List 1. Um, shout out again to Andy Tomberlin, who really enjoyed that one and championed that one big time. Um, but Psycho List 2, sold out everywhere, tough to get. Um, let us know if you guys saw it at your LCS. I'm betting no. I don't think uh, Black Box is getting that kind of distribution. But, you know, Cycle List 1 was a, a major um, secondary market success. And I think that not only was it a success with speculators, I think it was a um, success with readers. Hence why we're sitting here talking about number two, which was just sold out everywhere and people could not get their hands on. 
I will say also make sure you follow Black Box Comics on Twitter because they put a lot of behind the scenes information out there. Um, I follow them more so on Twitter. I'm sure it's on Instagram as well. But they put a lot of pages out there, a lot of different art. So if you're interested in Cyclists, make sure you follow Black Box Comics on Twitter. Yeah, The Militia is a book. I read the first issue and I got to get the next couple because that was an interesting book. Uh, Chuck Dixon book. Um, definitely enjoyed that one. Military comic. Kind of had a G.I. Joe ish feel maybe a little more grown so the next one we're going to talk about it seems like some stores got copies and then a lot of stores didn't and that's source point press the love she offered number three yeah this kind of goes along with cyclists because i i heard some of the same things about cyclists some of these smaller publishers um you, you run into this sometimes there are a few copies of the love she offered number three on ebay but we've heard reports of stores not getting it so um, there was also a pushback with Dead End Kids number three. All of that's doing, honestly, is just driving speculation. Dead End Kids number three is selling for like 30 bucks. Um, and uh, th this issue is selling for like $50 in the sets of one, two, and three. Um, again, Love She Offered is, was a big hit with readers. Um, I had to get hit over my head from people telling me like, yo, you need to read this. You need to read this. I'll be honest with you. I got caught up. I've said this before on the channel with the same thing. That I think a lot of people got caught up. The love she offered. It sounded like a romance story. It is not. Um, it is not. You know, it is a father going ruthless to protect his daughter. I got two daughters. If what happened to his daughter happened to mine, I can only imagine. So I like this book. I'm excited to read issue three. I read issue one. I read issue two. Um, so I'm on board with this one. I think SourcePoint Press, man, they put out quality, quality stuff. Um, it's only a matter of time before they get a serious secondary market hit on their hand with something getting adapted. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Wolf Warner because he's one that champions this book a lot as well. Um, yeah, definitely. So make sure you check out Wolf Warner on YouTube. He's got a great channel, especially Halls. A lot of great content on there. And he's been a huge champion in this book, making sure everyone can get their hands on it and give it a read. And... Um, He's the one that got me turned on to reading it. Between him and then, of course, our own Andy Tarnbloom was talking this book up yep. as well. Yeah, and Wolf Warner, if you're watching, man, we need you on the hot and cold show, brother. We need it. So let us know. Get, let's get in touch. Let's make that happen. Definitely. And the last book on the Reader Buzz this week. Jack's going to love this because he's all about this stuff. We're talking about Bloodshot number one. Yeah, I had to include it. Um, you and know, that's going to wrap up the reader. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, th I've had a lot of people reach out to me about um, my feelings on Valiant. I was literally in the DMs with a, a viewer talking Valiant Comics during the Hot and Cold show. Here's what I'll say about Valiant Comics. I enjoy the stories. Um, for me, it, it feels exactly like the Marvel Universe, the way everything's tied together, the way there's a diverse group of characters. But it's grittier. Also... I've said this before in various, like in article form, I probably said it on the channel. One of the difficult things if you get into comics tomorrow is, imagine you get into comics, right? And you read House of X and Powers of X. You, you know you're going to be lost. I almost cursed. That's how lost you're going to be. Um, what Valiant does well is they write every comic every new series in a way that allows a new reader to come in and they have these subtle ways of giving you backstory throughout the story. You never feel lost. Um, I don't know why they haven't taken off. Um, partially the former owner of CBSI used to, I'll be honest with you, just like people give, say that we up talk books and we can make books hot. Well, he used to down talk Valiant so much. I think it turned others off to it. Um, and again, that was his personal opinion. He's entitled to that opinion. Um, He's been right about a lot, but I don't think he was right about everything. And we believe by what you like. I like Valiant. Brian doesn't really like Valiant, but he's never really read it either. Yeah, so, I'm indifferent. Yeah, and I just think it would take him reading it and he would like it, right? I think there's, there's stories. I think Brian would love Eternal Warrior. Knowing Brian's love for uh, Thor and Conan, I feel like Brian would get into Eternal Warrior. But... You know, it, it, it takes somebody who knows Valiant to say to you, you know, you're an Exo Man of War guy. You're a Bloodshot guy. I like Bloodshot because he's like Punisher. It reminds me of those 90s comics I grew up. Comic Man Andy, you would like Bloodshot. But, um, you know, 
it's a cool story. But what the key with this is, I don't expect this comic to do anything on the secondary market. Let's start with that. I don't expect anything Valiant to do anything on the secondary market right now. They are as cold as it gets. The key is all the eggs are in this basket of this Bloodshot movie. We are like 20-something days away from a trailer. The trailer is going to debut ahead of the Zombieland 2 um, movie. So when that movie hits theaters, the Bloodshot trailer will play in front of that. Um, And I imagine we'll see it on TV and YouTube and everywhere else. Will that spark interest? It could. Um, The other key is... How good does the movie do? It's Feb- coming out in February. It's coming up. Uh, you know, Vin Diesel, I think this is a character. I know some people are going to be like, Vin Diesel can't carry a movie. This is a character Vin Diesel can play. Um, we're not talking about the deepest character in the world. We're talking about this is not, this is a, basically a man coming back from the dead. It's like Punisher back from the dead, controlled by nanites, um, who's fighting against that control and, you know, kicking some ass. Um, this is going to be a straight up 80s or 90s action movie. You know, this is going to be um, machine guns and, you know, jungle warfare. Um, if it's good, if it captures people's interest, anything can happen with Valiant. It can't get – the thing about not being colder is it can't get worse. You can buy the these Valiant keys cheap. Um, this week on comicbookinvest.com in the back issue bolo section, I highlighted – everybody loves homages right now. So I highlighted um, some Bloodshot homage covers that are selling well below ratio that may be a nice caveat for somebody getting into the Bloodshot. But I want to talk about two variants as it relates to this book. The first one is on the variant buzz section is Bloodshot, the 1 in 250 carbon fiber variant. Now, if you're not familiar with Valiant, this is something really cool that they do. By the way, shout out to the editor, uh, Robert Myers. Um, Good dude. Um, I've had a good relationship with him, been able to get some information, discussion with him over the years. He's a good guy. Um, They do a huge ratio variant for every one of their big releases. And they find a unique way to, to make those books different. They've had a glass variant. They had a – the Punk Mambo number one variant was fucked. If you ever buy Funko Pops that have like the furry hair, um, think that. They had variants that literally had color form stickers on them where every book was different. And this one is carbon fiber. Legit carbon fiber. So those high ratios are heavily collected. Now, they used to, back in the day, come out and go way over ratio. I'm talking about like they would be like one two fifty would be selling for five six hundred dollars Because the Valiant fan base is very similar to like G.I. Joe or Ninja Turtles or Power Rangers where it's small, but, but they love their stuff. But it's dwindled a bit. Um, they've had some company issues. Dinesh Shamdasani, the former CEO, not running the company anymore. That turned a lot of people off. A lot of people turned away. But I will say... For all of you Dinesh supporters, Dinesh produced this movie. Sony had to have him in his hive mind company front and center. Nobody bleeds valiant like Dinesh. Um, and Dinesh, friend of the channel, friend of CBI, he has let us know consistently that this movie is going to be big. He's a believer. Now, he's a salesman, but he's gone on record saying this. He, he believes in this project. Um, The other variant I want to talk about is from Frankie's Comics, no less. Frankie's Comics has a Mike Choi variant releasing um, today that was just incredible. It's been up for order on their site for a little while. Um, The beauty of Valiant Collectors is they're completionists. they got to have every variant that comes out. Valiant does a great job working with retailers. Um, They do some really exclusive low-print variants. Um, That Mike Choi variant is exceptional. so be sure to head to frankiescomics.com, not during the show, after the show. Check it out. And again, if you're a Patreon member, be on the lookout for those Mike Choi variants hitting those bolo boxes. And be on the lookout for that Simpleman's Comics Patreon code, which will get you a discount at checkout. And that 
wraps up the reader buzz section for this week. I knew Jack loves him some Bloodshot, loves him some Valiant. Um, I understand why. Great reader, and he has rapport with and relationships with a lot of people within Valiant. Like I said, I'm not against Valiant. I'm just indifferent. Haven't read a lot of their books. So many books out there right now that I don't get to read what I want to read, much less pick up something new. <laughs> yeah, and we, I mentioned the old owner of CBSI being against them. I want to say shout out to him because he actually gave me the okay to go interview Dinesh when he was CEO. I said to him, I knew he had been so negative to Dinesh. I said, hey, how would you feel about me doing a counterpoint interview? And he okayed it. And I had never read anything Valiant ever at that point. Interviewed Dinesh. His, him and the people were good people. Robert Myers, all those guys. Um, they hit me up with some trades. I went home. I ended up getting sick right after that convention. You know you get that con crud where you get kind of sick after a convention because all everybody's coughing in their hands and crap like that. Um, I got sick, ended up reading five trades over the like weekend of being sick that next or the week of being sick that next week. Hooked. Now I absolutely love it. I pick them up in trade though. I'm not a valiant floppy reader, but I cannot advocate more. Give it a try. The ch- trades are cheap too. They're like ten bucks, so it's it's worth giving it an opportunity. With that, we're going to move into the Variant Buzz section. Starting with Action Comics 1015. This is the Lucio Perillo variant, correct? Right. And this one, really, cover A could be, again, on this list somewhere because they ended up making a cover art change and putting Naomi on the cover of cover A, which increase the buzz this the big buy as great as perio is as a cover artist is really the fact that naomi's on the cover um this is they naomi's, dash naomi yeah this is her <laughs> first four way four way for four a uh into um you know the regular mainstream dc continuity uh, not a lot happens in this issue to say make it a key issue um People are going to say it's the first full appearance of her in continuity. Are we really collecting in continuity first appearances? Um, and there was already one. She was in 1014, so we call that a cameo. That's stupid. But anyways, um, that's what people, some people may say. Um, but I love this cover. And Batman is trying to figure out who is this Naomi character? What is up with her? We're getting a little detective Batman, and I think that's going to be the story that plays out. I love that cover, but it was pointed out to me that Superman's cape is humongous on that cover. And once that was pointed out to me, I didn't see with that cover. So now it's almost ruined on me now. That's a king sheet, not a twin yeah. bed. Like, how does he walk with that? I don't know. He ties it around his <laughs> shoulders like a sweater. Continental soldier? Yeah. <laughs> but the next one you had was Rise of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Sound Off number three. This is your, like your favorite series, isn't it? Again, I talked about this in number two. I have no earthly idea why people are buying this thing out. Why this, these books are hitting like $45, $50 for these incentives. It is not continuity. It's completely different Ninja Turtles. Like They must be set. buying it for the, the cartoon. Is all I can. I don't know. But the cartoon toys don't sell. They sit. My kids hate it. Um, I mean, I, maybe I'm using too small of a sample size, but you know, my daughters are like they're the OGs. They're like, man, we need that real turtles. I was in Walmart today. I swear on my kids. I'm in Walmart picking up groceries for dinner, and we we walk through the toy aisle because hashtag side project. That's all I'll say. And when we did that. My, my oldest starts going into a bolo rant about, why is Raphael the leader? I can't watch that show. Raphael is not the leader. He's a bad leader. And she's and then I started telling her about what happened in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 98 today. And, yeah, he's such a bad leader. He quit the team in the regular Ninja Turtles. I can't understand why this is popular. The cover is kind of cool. Um, but, man, this is one of those things. I, I don't always get everything in speculation. Um, but I tell you, I would have bought this one. For, for ratio if I would have seen it today because I just issue number one popped, issue two popped there's no doubt issue two pop. yeah if you are reading this let us know in the comments uh, what do you think about it this is not on my radar pop or not 
buy what you like. This isn't something I like, so I've let it pass by. Yeah, I guess I'd buy and flip it, but I'm not reading Rise of the Ninja Turtles. Right. But I will tell you this next book we're going to talk about is something that I do like and have bought. And this is The Dark Crystal. We got the Christian Ward FOC variant as well as the one per store. And it's the Age of Resistance number one. This is based off of that Netflix series that just came out, right? Yeah. And that that one per store is gorgeous. I mean, it is a killer cover. Um, but you know what I'm noticing, Brian? When we were on the last call show, ruining print runs for everybody, um, we didn't talk about the 125 variant. I don't think we were aware of that. Right. You know the 125 variant is selling for more than the one per store variant? Yeah, the one per store is actually, we saw that for going for like, I've, Sarah, who's a Patreon member, we had that discussion of, hey, we're seeing like a couple right before it was listed going for 50 bucks on eBay and we're debating should we wait? Do you think it'll go down? It's like, I think it'll go down, but since I said it, it'll probably go up. Well, it went down and they were listed for $19 today. Yeah, um, so it, at first my reaction this is something I didn't think about. Maybe I'm dumber than you guys, but um, I don't. Th- I think maybe there's probably other people out here that haven't thought about this, Brad. One per store variants have been hot, right? Well, how many stores are there that are getting it? <laughs> and not only that, who's ordering 25? Yeah. So this is what I thought. Is I said, my reaction thinking about every book, right? Especially like the way Marvel does it. I was like, well, a one per store. That's the book you want, right? That's. I don't like the one one in 25 variant either. Um, in, especially in comparison, but I don't say I don't, I don't like it. It just to me that one per store variant cover art is phenomenal. I can see you um, liking the one in twenty. If you're a fan of the show, the Netflix show, I could see that one in twenty five appealing to you more. Okay, I haven't watched the show yeah. yet. It's on my like to watch list. Brian's been trying to get me to watch it. I got to check it out. Um, I'm gonna watch it, but uh, I love the Christian Ward variant. Um, and again, being an FOC variant, I know that those have popped before with Boom. Um, it's not popped per se, but it's dry. It's not like an easy to find book. Um, plus, Christian Ward's a name artist. But yeah, it got me thinking, Brian. Like, you know, I bet you there's more one per store variants out there than the high ratio books. And we talked about this last night off the air about Angel. Some of those early one per store angels. I said, I can't figure out why those are selling for like 10 to $15. And I said, that's why. Because every store gets one, even if you order two copies. As long as you order the book, you're getting a one per store variant. And how many stores, when you talk about some of these releases, this isn't Something's Killing the Children. This isn't, you know, Once in Future. Right. Dark Dark Crystal, I mean, we had some of their books as a cold pick on the Hot and Cold show. It's kind of, I don't want to use the word niche, but... You, I don't think there's any in between. Either you like Dark Crystal or you don't. So I think that kind of... The, the first appearance that Marvel Super Special Magazine is starting to heat up, though. Yeah. So I think there are people paying attention to it. I think it's got potential. Um, but I think it's going to be a slower burn. Um, but yeah, I thought that one per store had a shot at being like a $50, $75 book, catch people off guard. But I think that that 125 has more long-term potential. It's harder to find. And it's going for 5 to $10 more already on the day of release. So, you know, if you're not into Dark Crystal, you're, none of this applies anyway. Um, but for my seasoned variant speculators, my people out there who are like, I don't care what it is. I just want to make a buck. That's where I'm trying to share this with you. This is something I never thought about. Uh, one per stores are cool. But if stores aren't consistently ordering 25 copies... Those, those ratio variants are the better grabs. So be on the lookout for that in the future. Yeah, try, to, try to add that to your thought process. Because that often flips when you hear one per store for like the Marvel and the DC titles. Oh, they yeah. order, Without a doubt. There are more copies of those out there. So the one per store could or could not be more rare. But yeah. Yeah. So like Spider-Man 1, the, the two per store variant that came out. Well, if you were getting like the high ratio variants, like 100 copy variants, you know, that – that if you were buying 100 copies, then that two per store, that's like a 1 in 50 variant. So, of course, that's going to go for more than the 1 in 25. But, yep. like I said, I think a lot of people that were ordering Dark Crystal were probably just ordering it for pull list customers and then maybe a couple on the wall. Right. That's probably pretty typical. So, yeah. 
The next one we're going to talk about is that Peach Momoko, right? This is for Ghost Spider number two. This was a one in 25. Yeah, this one heated up almost instantly. Um, again, Nick from Slab Hero, shout out to him. He put a post up about this one. He was all over this one. Um, this is one that people seem to like. Um, you didn't like this one, did you, Brian? I was debating it, but then I was like, because... I ended up saying no. I, I passed on it. But Peach Momoko is one of those artists that has started uh, garnering steam. What was it? A couple variants ago, there was one that popped. I forget which title that was for. And then there's a couple that didn't pop from Peach Momoko. But right. Ghost Spider, you know, we're both heavy on Ghost Spider. Yes. Um, so is the market issue. right now. Yeah. Enjoyed issue one. I, I bought up some more copies of issue number one. I bought up some copies of Spider Gwen Ghost Spider number 10. But Peach Momoko, the one in 25, I kind of passed on it, which means this will probably rise in value because that's how my logic usually works. $40, $50 right now. Yeah. So it's already making money on the secondary market. Um, you know, there were a lot of doubters of Ghost Spider or Spider Gwen. I got get used to really, though, calling her Ghost Spider. But there were a lot of Ghost Spider doubters a couple of years back. I remember when I was one of the early people like, who viewed her as a long-term play, not like a quick flip. Um, and people would call me silly, but it seems like Brian, those people have quieted. It seems like it's, this is a character that is not going anywhere. You're and seeing more, more go you're seeing more cosplay of this character now than you are Harley lately. As I would in, agree that this is probably a bigger character now than Harley Quinn. I would almost say, um, yeah, I mean, people are feverishly waiting for her to show up in a live action film versus birds of prey where people are kind of like Ugh. relics of youth this is the vault homage variant which a lot of people are quickly aware of because it's a modern comic in its own right and it's an homage to what deadly class deadly class one of my uh favorite books got the poster right here let me tell you something that was an amazing tv show i'm still angry about that but um yeah you know you can i'm gonna be brief because we talked about vault and the vault vintage program but their books haven't been selling out. Sarah and the Royal Stars didn't sell out. Queen of Bad Dreams didn't sell out. Brian, we know that firsthand, don't we, brother? But, uh, <laughs> but um, again, two books today, two sellouts. Um, plot and Relics of Youth sold out. I think releasing the books on the same day helped because if you were grabbing plot, maybe you were like, you know, I'll grab the Relics of Youth. Also, I've been telling Ben C. this, these modern homages – I think there's a niche there because when you release an homage variant, it's all about releasing – I mean, look, how many ASM 300 homages can exist in the market? Right? That's boring at this point. There's probably about as many homages as there are copies of ASM 300. For sure. <laughs> for sure. And, <laughs> and you know, I think when you're trying to release an homage, you want to release one that's never been done before. So, like, we just unveiled our Mad Cave Studios Tomb of Dracula number 10. It's only been done once before by Buffy the Vampire Slayer in, like, 10 years ago. Um, and how many people were buying Dark Horse Buffy books? So that was kind of our logic. Hot book. Book everybody wants right now. It's a uh, – and it's, it hasn't really been overdone. The Vault Vintage book that we just got cover art for tonight, never been done. Excited for that one. Um, major book, major key, hot key right now, and never been done before. And um, we're so we're excited. Deadly Class, being that it's such a modern book, it's never been done, but it's a book that's on everyone's mind. Um, the TV show is well liked, um, and the the book is exceptional. Um, they just they're on like issue forty. Um, great book, uh, Rick Remender, killer series. So I think this is smart. I think it's something to keep an eye out for. Um, I think these modern ones have have a shot. Right, and that wraps up the variant buzz section. So that means only one thing, and that it's time for Jack's long-term play. And a long-term play is the one book we haven't talked about, of course, and that is Harleen number one. I put a post out on the Comic Book Invest CBSI, at Comic Book Invest CBSI, by the way, on Instagram, the account saying, did you get this book? Did you read this book? How do you feel about this book? And, you know, we had people kind of split. People either, ever, first off, a lot of people said they got this book. Um, but the feeling was either uh, they loved it or they liked it but felt like we don't need another origin story for Harley Quinn. Um, 
I'm not going to count the people who just complained about the size of the book because we've had that conversation before. And, you know, the reality is DC Black Label is going to do what they're going to do. And again, releasing more books in that size allows you to get used to it. You need to buy those magazine bags and boards. You need to have a magazine short box in your collection because they're going to keep doing them. But I, as somebody who hasn't read all of these Harley Quinn origins, I'm excited to read one and excited to read one from Black Label because my hope is that we're going to get something kind of raw and unfiltered. Um, we hear the jokes about the bat wang or whatever. I hate even talking about that. Um, I think, again, that was a gotcha gimmick. That that wasn't the value of Batman Dan. Batman Dan was exceptional art, great storytelling. Um, Superman Year One, a book I really wasn't expecting to like, I ended up liking, was... I won't say exceptional art, but I'll say good art, great storytelling. Um, we have seen that consistently with um, with DC Black Label. I'm excited for the releases. They've got some Joker releases coming up. And the reason why I think this is important, Brian, is at some point, I think there needs to be a Harley Quinn origin story movie. And the question becomes, there's so many versions of her origin story. As commenters pointed out, shout out to Dan Piercy of The Reading Pile and dpiercyscomics.com. Um, longtime CBSI member. Dan, by the way, we miss you, brother. But um, he's been away for a bit. Um, you know, he commented, and he, he's definitely a Harley Quinn guy, right? He reads a lot of Harley Quinn stuff. And he feels like, oh, we don't need another origin. So, um I can understand where he's coming from. But again, I think that that's what works into this book's favor and why this book is important is because there are so many origins. Which one is the one you go with, right? And look at where the movies are going, the, especially after this Joker movie comes out that seems to be like ready for an Academy Award and Joaquin Phoenix looks like he's about to be the man. Um, I think they're going to go darker. I think they're going to go to that route. And I think that this could be something that one day is the basis or looked at at least as the seminal origin story, the one that you need. Um, now, I know like my old school mad love people and stuff like that are going to kill me, but we need to get a deeper dive into this character. Honestly, I don't like Harley Quinn because, you know, she never has the substance that I think she needs, right? The this, this story, the basis of the character, I think is phenomenal so much potential um we could tell a great story about what happens with trauma um trauma changes you and harley quinn's a great example of that but um i think too often she is just the butt of the things that the joker does um and then her individual comic has just been like a comedy comic it's like what happens to my man deadpool when i was growing up my man deadpool was a serious um, Rob Liefeld had that character kicking ass and taking names um, and now that character has become you know a comedy book and that's the way the Harley Quinn books are I was looking forward to this book I am looking forward to this book I believe this book will have some legs because that's not what you're going to get now you still see some like some examples of that in the cover of cover B where you see like she's laughing and, and that that's part of her personality but You've got a more old school costume, the less overly sexualized costume, um, and you've got gritty, realistic uh, stuff. And help me out, Brian, pronouncing my man, the artist. Uh, no. That is one that <laughs> you straight reject me. <laughs> that is one that I always mess up. Oh, yeah. I've looked well, it up on Twitter a couple times because he has it like in his Twitter handle the pronunciation. But yeah, I'm gonna back out on this one because uh, I will say it wrong. Stefan, uh, I want to say, yeah, yeah, him, yeah. you know who I'm talking about. Out there, but he's great. Me. I mean, it's bad because it's like one of my favorite he's artists. Amazing. He always knocks it out of the park with this. Yeah. Art. That, and that's the point I was going to make is like, he does that like realistic kind of art style that I think really, when I'm reading a black label book, uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking, that's like HBO to me, the HBO of comics, right? Yeah. I want something that tells a darker, grittier story. Not necessarily has to be more violent or more, you know, but I just want something that makes me feel like it's for me. It's for 34-year-old Jack, um, not the 14-year-old Jack. The 14-year-old Jack thinks the, the humor in the Harley Quinn book is funny. 
But a 34-year-old Jack wants to know why this woman is this way and, and what, how is she going to be within the universe? Where does she fit in? Um, so I was excited to read this book. I am excited to read this book. I'm excited for everything DC Black Label. And again, that's the thing about the long-term play. This is a $7.99 cover price. This is a readily available book. Most stores order this. This is not a short-term flip. This could easily just be a reader buzz book. But to me, if I pick the like Peach Momoku variant, we have no idea where that's going to be 10 years from now. A lot of variants rise and fall. This is my long-term play because this has a chance to one day be looked at as the origin of Harley Quinn, the book you need to understand Harley Quinn. And I think that those DC Black Label books, especially the early ones, um, have a chance to be pioneers. So this is a book I really, really like um, and I was really excited for and I think um, has an opportunity to be what this segment of the show is, is supposed to be about. It is the long-term play of the week. We're talking years down the road. So buy it, read it, enjoy it, stash it. Be on the lookout, like we talked about, when it hits those 75% off sales and it goes from $8 to $2 and then load up on it. Um, be on the lookout at your LCS if you see it at 50% off sales. It goes down to regular cover price. Um, I grabbed both covers. I like cover A better, but I grabbed copies of both covers. So be on the lookout for this one. Yeah, I could see why you'd like one cover or the other. I think both great. To be honest, I don't know which one I like better. I I can make arguments for both. But either way, um, I have both covers. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. This is one that I actually pre-ordered a couple months ago. Just when they first announced it, I was I was ready to pick this book up. But Right. Great long-term play, and that's going to wrap up the Bolo list for this week. So I'll bring the actual list back up on the screen here. And so we covered first appearances. Reader buzz, variant buzz, and then, of course, we just talked about Jack's long-term play. Let us know in the comments, what books did you guys like this week? Uh, there's some titles on here that I'm sure a lot of people liked that weren't on the Bolo list. But we always say, this isn't just our list. This is stuff that we've been hearing the buzz about or people have been reaching out to us. That We're putting this out there to make people aware of. These are titles that people are talking about. This isn't a list of, hey, go buy all these books and you're going to make a bunch of money off comics. Yeah, especially this week. This was a lighter week as far as, like, speculation moves. I mean, really looking at this list, Brian, other than, like, that Peach Momoku variant, I don't know that there were really any books that you could buy for the easy quick flip other than that. Um, this was a great reader week um, and a great – or I'll at least say a week every week is a great opportunity for long-term plays. But, yeah, so we're not telling you this is one – this is one you may have decided – you know what? I'm going to save my money. I'm just grabbing one or two books. Um, so definitely let us know in the comments what you what you were buying and what you were thinking about this week. Right. And also make sure you tune in tomorrow night where we live premiere the FOC show, The Last Call. That's right. We're going to get to the end of the week. And it's the last time before Monday before certain books enter Last Call or Final Order Cutoff. 23 days before release. So we talk about 10 books, whether they're reader buzz. I say reader buzz because of the Bola show. They might be reader picks. Some of them we might just like the cover art. And some might actually have some speculation to it. But either way, we pick 10 books that are hitting Final Order Cutoff. Talk about those. But we also provide the full Final Order Cutoff list over at SimpleManscomics.com when the video goes live as well. Jack, you get the last word, bud. Well, you know what I want to do is I want to, again, thank our Simpleman's Comics family, the Patreon members. Um, I mentioned my man Deuce Hammer with the, the kind gesture from my father. I mentioned Carter Lee, uh, you know, looking out with those uh, exclusive early previews. Um, the family is growing. We'd love to have more of you join the family, um, Simpleman's Comics Patreon. Um, but love, 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 love everybody that's in that group. Um, and check out our Discord where, you know, we are constantly throwing out spec out there. And those guys are, and, and gals, because we have, can't forget Sarah, they are feverish about these new releases and uh, back issue plays. Um, so thank you to that. And thank you to everybody who watched. Um, again, we appreciate 
Uh, everybody who watches, everybody who throws that thumbs up, uh, lets us know that they appreciate the work because Brian and I are up late right now doing this, and like most nights. And uh, so we appreciate those who appreciate what we're doing for the community. So to everybody who reaches out, DMs, thank you very much. Right. So we are, yeah, we're at 12.58. I got to be at work in a few hours. But it's all good. Love everyone in the community. Um, thanks for watching. Like he said, click that thumbs up button for us. And if you're watching this on replay, thank you for watching as well. Yes. And we will see you during the premiere of the Last Call show tomorrow night. And with that being said, we wish you guys good night. <laughs>